We're News 88, WCBS, New York. More than just the headlines. Cloudy with some sprinkles around at 49 degrees, 559. I'm Rita Sands. I'm Tom Franklin. These are the top stories we're covering on WCBS News 88. Attorney General Edwin Meese says he's gratified that a special prosecutor does not have enough evidence to date to indict Meese in connection with an Iraqi pipeline deal. The prosecutor says his investigation is not over. A figure in the French Connection drug case, Anthony Passero, has been arraigned in Brooklyn on conspiracy charges after being on the loose for 13 years. The Reverend Lorenzo Zorza, a Catholic priest, who was one of 39 New York area people named in the Sicilian Connection drug bust yesterday has slipped through the hands of the authorities and is at large. 17-year-old boy first thought to have been wounded by two gunmen who killed a beauty shop operator and a beautician in Brooklyn yesterday has now been charged with being an accomplice in the murders. Police say a Monmouth County, New Jersey jail guard broke into his ex-girlfriend's home in Aberdeen Township, shot and killed her and her boyfriend before killing himself with his own gun. Good evening, I'm Tom Franklin. Good evening, I'm Rita Sand. CBS News covers the world now, 6 o'clock. This is the world tonight. Good evening, I'm Douglas Edwards, CBS News. I would uh, certainly urge that there be no rush to judgment. There were new developments today in the controversy surrounding Attorney General Meese, and he took heart from them and held a news conference urging patience on those who would have him step down. Deborah Potter reports. At the request of Mises' lawyers, Special Prosecutor James McKay announced that the Attorney General is not on the verge of being indicted. Based on the evidence developed to date, I do not intend to recommend uh, that the grand jury return an indictment against Mr. Meese. McKay said his investigation will continue at least through the end of this month, but Meese pronounced himself gratified by the statement and said he has no intention of resigning. I have had tremendous support from within the administration uh, at the highest levels and throughout the administration, and I'm confident that the action in which I'm uh, taking at the present time is the right one. Meese brushed aside criticism from many in Congress, including some Republicans who say that he has become a liability. If a person has to step aside on the basis of allegations, Meese said, it would be easy for unscrupulous people to force someone out of office. And the Attorney General said he intends to stay on the job as long as the President wants him to. Deborah Potter, CBS News, Washington. More of the world tonight in a moment. The Judds for AT&T Long Distance. Reach out. It's an easy thing to do. You can make it happen. But just a word or two don't need a reason to make somebody's day. People you miss so much. Road, the one thing that makes those long, hard hours so worthwhile is a phone call home. You know, it's the best way to keep us close to the ones we love. All you do is reach out, reach out and touch someone. When the love comes right through, that's AT&T, the right choice. The observance of Good Friday began in the Holy Land this morning and moved westward to Rome in the traditional ceremonies marking Christ's walk to his crucifixion. But in the Holy Land, there was no peace for this solemn day. Bob Simon has a report. Jerusalem has always been the city of holy wars. On this Good Friday, Christians wound their way up the Via Dolorosa, Jews celebrated the first night of Passover, and Muslims expressed their anger in demonstrations after Friday prayers. On this Good Friday, a Jewish policeman was stabbed by a Muslim demonstrator not far from where Christians were praying at the third station of the cross, where Christ fell for the first time. The uprising did not stop for the Holy Week. Today, in a West Bank village, two Palestinians were shot dead, 13 were wounded. In Ramallah, a protest march by Arab women was interrupted by tear gas and mace. Some Palestinians marked the Holy Day with another communique, declaring war on the American peace plan. The clandestine leadership of the revolt in the territories is calling for clashes with Israeli soldiers and a general strike to coincide with George Shultz's arrival in Jerusalem on Easter Sunday. One more vision of peace 
in the city of Holy Wars, Resurrection, and Revelation, the city where Christ rose from the dead, where Muhammad rose to heaven from the very same stone where Abraham heard the voice of God. Bob Simon, CBS News, Jerusalem. As Jewish families gathered together today for the Passover Seder, there seemed reason for special joy in the Soviet Union. This is Barry Peterson in Moscow. It was the latest touch of glasnost, the Soviets allowing an American rabbi to preach tonight's Passover service at a Moscow synagogue. A sign, said New York Rabbi Mark Schneier, of changing times. And the Soviets are still allowing large numbers of Jews to leave, 8,000 last year, more expected this year. But for longtime dissident Yuli Kasharovsky, there will be no traditional Seder meal tonight. He is on a hunger strike, risking his life to force the Soviets to give him the exit visa that 17 years of asking has failed to produce. Barry Peterson, CBS News, Moscow. The World Tonight. More CBS News after this. If you had a meter copier in your office, this is the sound you'd be used to hearing. You see, at Meter, we never stop working on copiers. So our copiers never seem to stop working. In fact, they're so reliable, what to buy for business chose six as best buys. So call 1-800-ABC-MITA and find out about copiers that'll be music to your ears. Meter, all we make are great copiers. For Mrs. Paul's, here's Mr. Paul. The missus says fillets. And I say fillets. But no matter what you say, these are delicious. The fish is so mild and white and flaky. And the missus breads them with her own special breadcrumbs. Mrs. Paul's Crispy Crunchy F-I-L-L-E-T-S. Now, let's see how this announcer fella says it. Look for Mrs. Paul's Delicious Crispy Crunchy Fillets. Oh, well. If it's not Mrs. Paul's, throw it back. Another accusation of poison gas warfare in the long Iran-Iraq war today. Iran says Iraq has dropped chemical bombs on a number of villages, killing 75 people and injuring 100 more. There were no missiles today, but as Anthony Mason tells us in a report he has brought from Tehran, there is always the fear. Noontime in one of Tehran's main squares. A siren warns of another Iraqi missile attack. Along the sidewalks, the concrete shelters, shaped like Quonset huts, begin to fill up. A few faces peer out over the sandbags and up at the sky. A Scud missile may be on its way, it may not. The uncertainty is almost as frightening as the sound of the explosion. For a month, Tehran has been a target almost every day. Sometimes one or two missiles, sometimes eight or nine. The overall damage seems small as you drive through the city but the severest wounds are psychological. The hotel cab dispatcher has sent his wife and children to live in a tent outside the city. An underground parking garage has been cleared of cars so people can sleep in the spaces. Thousands have brought blankets and carpets and television sets. Tehran is visibly worn and weary. The missiles may strike only a few parts of the city, but everyone feels the reverberations. Anthony Mason, CBS News, Tehran. The World Tonight returns in one minute. If you're concerned about heart disease and your doctor advises exercise, the right foods, and an aspirin a day, you should know that heart specialists recommend Ecotrin more than Bayer when they're concerned about aspirin irritation because Ecotrin is safety coated. Heart specialists know the importance of aspirin. Studies with people who've had a heart attack or unstable angina show aspirin helps reduce heart attacks as much as 50%. So see your doctor about safety-coded Ecotrin, the one heart specialists recommend more than Bayer. Even in its standard form, the new Buick Regal Coupe sets new standards. And now, for a limited time, you can save up to $1,050 on a special option package. Buick Regal. The car is Regal, and so are the savings. Savings based on manufacturer's suggested retail price of option package versus options purchased separately. You must take actual retail delivery from dealer stock by April 15, 1988. See your Buick dealer for details. The great American 
Another improvement in the unemployment rate. The government says it stands at 5.6%, down a tenth of a percentage point from February, but it still means that almost 7 million people who want jobs don't have them. The stock markets were closed today. They reopened Monday with the Dow Jones Industrial Standing at 1988, up nine points this week. Wall Street on this world tonight. More troops for Panama. That report from David Martin at the Pentagon. The Pentagon announced tonight it is sending about 1,300 military policemen along with 26 additional helicopters to Panama to further beef up security around American installations and the canal itself. That comes on top of 700 additional security personnel sent to Panama last week. According to a brief announcement by the Pentagon, the purpose of this deployment is to augment forces already in place. The instability of the current situation in Panama, the heavy-handed tactics of Noriega in dealing with the situation, and the potential for increased threats to U.S. citizens and interests in Panama make this deployment essential at this time to ensure the continued safety of U.S. personnel and facilities. The announcement concludes by saying further deployments will depend on circumstances. David Martin, CBS News, the Pentagon. The White House and State Department may have a new proposal to break the deadlock on ending the Afghanistan war, but so far, at least, the Soviets don't seem to be biting. Tom Fenton reports. UN negotiator Diego Cordovez finally admitted today in Geneva that time is running out. When the Afghan peace talks resumed there a month ago, it looked as if they were about to succeed. The Soviets agreed to pull their troops out of Afghanistan within a nine-month period. They said yes to almost every American demand. It was the U.S. that suddenly upped the ante by adding the new demand that the Soviets cut off aid to their Afghan puppet regime when the U.S. cuts off aid to the Afghan rebels. The talks have now gone into the Easter recess deadlocked. If the negotiations fail, the Soviets have made it clear they will still go ahead with their withdrawal, but on their own terms. Tom Fenton, CBS News, London. The World Tonight continues after this message. If you think finding low-cost insurance is a consumer's dream, you're right. That's exactly why SBLI was created by the New York Legislature. To give New Yorkers life insurance at such a low cost, it would be like a dream come true. For example, if you're a 35-year-old man who doesn't smoke, SBLI offers $250,000 of yearly renewable and convertible group term insurance for only $182.50. And if you're a 35-year-old non-smoking woman, the first year cost is even less. S no wonder SBLI's low cost has been applauded by consumer groups and publications as well as leading newspapers across the state. To get low cost SBLI, just stop in at your local savings bank or call toll free 1 800 GET SBLI. That's 1 800 GET SBLI. We give you more money for living. SBLI. SBLI Fund, New York, New York. Policy G60 or G61. And now this late-breaking story. It's April 1st, Doug, and that gives us the excuse to say we have a late story. What we actually have is a good story about you. This is Joe Dembo, and I'd like to say goodbye and Godspeed, not only for all of us at CBS News on the radio side, but for the countless people who have listened to you for so many years. By now, you've heard scores of tributes to you, and an outpouring of affection and respect such as few in our line of work ever receive. You've heard speakers call you a living legend and a superb broadcaster. And you've also heard the people who worked with you each day try to tell you how much your presence, your kindness, your skills, and your concern meant to all of us. We wish you many healthy, happy years in the Florida sun, Douglas. Many a hole in one. And may the wind sit in the shoulder of your sail. Now here's Dan. Doug, for all of us, you are one of the founding fathers. You invented the job of anchoring as we know it today. You've done it yourself for 40 years, and you've taught two generations of anchormen, including this one, how to do it. Frankly, I don't know what we're going to do around here without your being here, but I do want you to know in a personal, direct way, and this is widely shared, that a piece of Douglas Edwards will be in every broadcast that we do at CBS News. And we expect to see you back and around here fairly often. In the meantime, I hope you have caviar days and champagne nights. We salute you, my friend. Have a good time. 
Thank you, Dan Rather. Thank you, Joe Dembo. It is an uncommon privilege to work for CBS News. After almost 46 years, this reporter rolls down the curtain as a CBS News correspondent. In early 1943, my first assignment was The World Today, so it is fitting that my closing comes on The World Tonight. Before I go, I must say thanks to Richard Carlson, the power behind The World Tonight, superb talent, a good friend. To Keith Park, technical supervisor, the best in the business, and a lovely man. Director Tom Carlson and I have survived many a crisis. His stopwatches are sure, his company warming. To CBS News Vice President Joseph Dembo, to all the great men and women of CBS News with whom I have worked for so very long and with so much pleasure, and with the pleasure of this company, my thanks, my appreciation, my love. To you in the audience, thanks for honoring me with your presence. I shall miss this contact, this opportunity each night, each day to shed light. But it is time to get on with the next leg of the journey round the bend. Godspeed. The World Tonight, Friday, April 1st, Douglas Edwards, CBS News. <laughs>